Welcome back to my living room, and welcome back to the welcome to the 2010 Splatter House. Please bitrate, be okay. It's holding a little bit constant now. I kind of have to do this in the living room because uh, this is a PS3 game, so being able to bring everything into the office with a Wii U gamepad obviously isn't going to work for this. All right, so let's hope for the best. This is the 2010 Splatterhouse game. This is a game, it's a weird one, because it has, it had a very troubled development. You can watch Matt McMuscle's video on that if you're so curious. And when this game came out, it was, first of all, it exists. And it was lambasted by critics when it came out, because, uh, frankly, it's... Uh, got a bunch of issues. The combat's sort of shallow. The performance can be kind of bad. The loading times are real annoying. It can be buggy. It's got its host of issues, but that's kind of the way Splatterhouse games have always been. It's not all that great a game, but it's gory as hell and it's amazing. Oh no, come on. I just want to have a Halloween stream. So far, it's looking like there's tiny pockets of bad bitrate, but it's so far staying consistent. For what it's worth, I like the 2010 Splatterhouse game as it is. It's not great, but it's fine. However, that's not the entire reason I wanted to buy the game. The reason I bought it, or at least part of it, was right here. In a bold move, they decided to package in the three classic Splatterhouse games as unlockables. And what's interesting about this is there were only three games in the series plus one spin-off that wasn't released outside Japan for the longest time until uh, Namco Archives, I think it is, on the PS4 and Switch. I think it's on the Switch. I don't know. So they basically just made a Splatterhouse complete collection alongside their brand new game. That's pretty awesome, probably because... Like, no one played Splatterhouse, so they got to get people up to speed. And that's what we're here for. We're going to be playing the original game this Halloween. And not to mention, the version that was included in this collection was a also sort of a big deal for Splatterhouse fans. Because this was the first time that the, uh, that the arcade version was released to public like you know you had the arcade machines but other than that it was ported to the turbo graphics which we did get and it was released on the uh and that version was released on the wii virtual console but other than that this was the first time the arcade version was released nowadays that's not horribly uncommon there used to be a port of the arcade version on ios which i had and i played all the damn time Uh, it's available on the Namco Museum on the Switch, which is a crazy thing, because it's like, you buy this collection, it's like, oh, you get Pac-Man, Galaga, like, all of these classic games, and then Splatterhouse. So, the original Splatterhouse is a side-scrolling action game, beat em up where the focus is not so much the intricate combos or abilities, it's the gore. Like, it it's all gore. And it's awesome. For 1988, this was pretty rad. And now, the thing about Splatterhouse that's worth noting is when you're playing it, this is very much a game that you are supposed to memorize. You know, it was an arcade game. The point is, you figure out... I think uh, Derek Alexander said it best in his video on the game, which is how I was introduced to Splatterhouse. In that Splatterhouse is a game where uh, you need to know where to stand, what to hit, and when to hit it. If you can do that, then Splatterhouse is no... You can easily beat this game without taking damage if you know all of that. And once upon a time, I did know all of that. Uh, on that iOS port that I mentioned owning, I could beat this entire game on the hardest difficulty, which just impacted the amount of hit points you had. So, it, so, you know, what difficulty you beat it on really didn't matter. 
but I could beat the entire game on that on the hardest difficulty without taking damage aside from one level. And that's level six, because that level is a pain in the ass. Be careful of that boy worm that comes out of the weird corpse thing. So that was stage one. After you finish a level, some of you, like two hearts, I think at most, get restored. And you keep going. Thankfully, since this is an arcade port, uh, or arcade emulation, I should say, uh, infinite continues, so long as I keep hitting, so long as I keep adding coins. And that's really important, because, uh, I used, as I said, I used to be amazing at this game. That is no longer the case. It was, it had been years that I, since I had last played it, between when I used to have it on my phone and when I bought this collection on the PS3. Like, it was literal years, and I had lost my touch in that time. Since I've gotten this collection, I've played this game a bit, I still can't beat it. I can't do it again. So, the purpose of this stream is sit me down for three hours and make me beat this game. Hopefully. Oh, okay. Sort of a timer here. This is a giant wall of flame chasing me. As I just continue cutting everything in half. Man, for... Back in the 80s, this game must have been crazy gory. And that's kind of why I love it. Most professional critics, and honestly most casual fans, or just casual players, say that Splatterhouse 3 is the best of the series, because it's the, uh, it's the closest one to being a normal game. It's like a Streets of Rage-style beat-em-up. It's got multiple endings more complexity to the actual gameplay. But nah, man, I think the simplicity of 1 and 2 is what makes these games fun. And 1 is the one I've spent the most time with and have gotten the best at. Which, uh, as you'll be seeing throughout this playthrough, is kind of sad. I foresee me having a lot of trouble when we get to stage 4. Or, uh, is it stage 3? I forget. So here we are in the second boss, the Poltergeist. This one, I remember giving me some trouble when I came back to this version. I'm just kind of standing here and punching. Hoping to hit anything that falls off the ceiling. And now I gotta beat up the chair. Oh man, okay. Thankfully, Rick's saving grace is that he is very quick at attacking. Like, you can just mash that attack button and he will punch pretty damn rapidly. He controls kind of heavily, so that's sort of a problem. Most part, it's, uh, he's pretty responsive. So now I need to punch this painting. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Oh, darn it. Yeah, my, my best strategy for fighting bosses is find a good place to stand. Like, I'll sort of... Yeah. I'm just kind of going to stand here. I just have to worry about that one can that's going to spawn on top of me. All right. And now that's the end of the random things from the ceiling. Oh, ay, come on. Oh, I think I just got a one-up. It's kind of hard to tell because uh, things on the HUD flash. So, like, I, I see out of the corner of my eye that I, that, like, a life just appeared on the HUD. And I'm like, oh, is that a new life or is that just the, uh, is that just the HUD flashing? Okay, now we're back at the painting. I think standing in the middle of the room is smarter here. Because it doesn't have the time to sweep back up. However, once it's dead, get out of the center of the room. Because the chandelier falls, and that can hurt you, and that can kill you. You see, look, I only got one heart back, and yeah, this stage can be a bit of a pain. There's a trick to getting through it a bit easier, and I will be abusing it, trust me. So we got a shotgun here, and your first instinct is going to be like, Oh man, I want to use that so bad. Uh, don't. Duck so that when you attack, you just kick instead of firing it. Because it has limited ammo, and you want to conserve it. Oh, 
Now, I don't, I'm not even sure what the hell this thing is, but it's really gross. Oh, and uh, don't get caught by that. It doesn't kill you. It drags you down underneath the docks. And then you have to deal with this section. It's worth noting that if you avoid getting, if you avoid landing on those puddles, you don't have to do this. And of course, because of that, it's a lot harder than everything else. They throw a lot more at you. God, oh man, and the, they have just slightly more range than you, and I died. I promise you, once upon a time, I was amazing at this game, and this technically counts as a checkpoint, so I'm going to be starting back here. Thankfully, if I die one more time, I'll be starting the stage over. So I guess since I don't have too much else to say, the story of this game is uh, that this guy, Rick, I don't remember, Rick Taylor, that's his last name. I keep wanting to call him Rick Sanchez. It's like, no, that's definitely something else. So Rick Taylor here and his girlfriend Jennifer came to this uh, house, the West Mansion, in order to do research for a uh, school project. However, when they got here, Jennifer was captured and Rick was left for dead. Be sure to duck behind these trees because the foreground can hide certain objects. Not always. But like this one. Oh, never mind. They were talking about the, I was thinking of the pearls. The other shotgun is just given to you for free. So the reason you want to hold on to the shotguns is because of the boss. This is Biggie Man. He is easily the most iconic character from the game. And he is a pain in the ass. Now I'm out of shells and God trying to kill him. Okay, I did it on my first try. All right. Those chainsaws have a good amount of reach. And he can hit you when you're jumping. So he's actually a really hard boss. I cannot believe I did that. Now watch this boss, which honestly isn't that hard, uh, tear me apart. So anyway, Jennifer was kidnapped, uh, Rick was left for dead, and uh, he found, the only reason he survived is because the mask that he's wearing, the terror mask, found him and went and attached itself to his face, promising him vengeance. That's also what made him super buff. Uh, these spinning blades can be really hard to dodge just because the frame rate's kind of weird. It can be hard to... It feels the speed at which they move is weird, so it's kind of hard to tell like where when it's actually going to be an active hitbox. Honestly, I don't know where most of that story came from. It might have been like written on the side of the arcade cabinet. So most of those gaps, I just filled in by remembering what happens in the 2010 game because it's a reboot. All right, the Hall of Mirrors. Watch out. I want to say it's this one. No, maybe this one. Yep. Some of the mirrors spawn uh, doubles of you. They have all your moves, and they have a slide, which is not something you have. And that's really a pain in the ass. Hey, all right, high score. I guess it doesn't save my high scores, because I've definitely played this before. Yes, continue. You start back at the beginning of the level, all your stuff back. You're going to need it, trust me. And I think this is the only time in the game these harpoons show up. And that's just the kind of game Splatterhouse is. Like, here's just a one-off thing that we gave you because it's gory and cool. Yeah, so it's actually kind of best to wait for the auto scroll on this. Alright, there we go. But back up a little bit because you don't want to be caught off guard by whatever's going to come next, which I think is the bat now. Yep. And in case you're wondering, looking at Rick's design, whether he was inspired by, uh, Jason Voorhees, 
Probably, but I don't know. However, it did at least cause a little bit of a fear of uh, copyright concerns because the American version of the Turbo Graphics game changed it to a red mask. It's the only only game in the series and the only version where that was the case. However, later games would sidestep the problem entirely by changing the mask's design a little bit, so it no longer looked so much like a hockey mask. It's definitely the most obvious in this game. Like, th in 3 especially, it looks pretty different. I don't have much in terms of strategy for beating the mirror doubles. They are kind of a pain. Alright, so now we're in the chapel. And here we have our next boss, uh, the inverted cross with a bunch of heads. It's a uh, weird, weird boss design. Not gonna, not gonna lie. But it's the only time in the game you get an axe, which acts exactly the same as the cleaver. So yes, right now we are just chasing it down, and then once it reaches over here, we start actually whacking at it. You need to hit the cross itself, though. Of course, getting rid of the, its shield is helpful. Spacing is very important, and I beat it on my first try without taking any damage. All right. In the Turbo Graphics version of the game, I believe also only in the American version, this room's design has changed a little bit, so it doesn't look like a chapel. And the boss is in, the boss is instead an evil mask instead of the cross, and it's a uh, you get a golden cleaver instead of an axe. If you want to know more about all the differences, uh, check out. It feels weird to call it a Stop Skeletons from Fighting video because it's from way back in the day. That video is 10 years old now, damn. Uh, but Derek Alexander's video, Getting Super Nerdy Splatterhouse. He's covered everything Splatterhouse on his channel. Like I said, he's the reason I even know about this game. Now, stage five here. This is the stage that in my uh, return to this game on the PS3, I have never been able to beat. I can get to the boss... Not super consistently, but I can. So we'll just have to see how I perform now. Because uh, so far, things actually seem to be going pretty darn well for me. Oh, now this room's a pain. Yeah, because these, these floors here are slippery. So do not stand still on them, or else you'll just slip down into the... Muck and those those hands crawling around will guarantee you take damage. In fact, I think even if the hands are gone, just touching that well, you can't really kill them. Just go fast. That actually works kind of well. Ah, oh, damn it! And if they're jumping before you even get there, take them out. Otherwise, speed run. I can't wait until we get to the next stage and I suddenly can't offer strats anymore. Because uh, I haven't replayed stage 6 in a long fucking time. Okay, you have a choice here. Go up or down. Up. Pick up. Going down is a way bigger pain in the ass. Up ain't easy either. This stage is just hard no matter what. But down is harder. It does, however. Up uh, introduces me to my favorite enemy in the game. These ghosts flying around. They're called Jokers. And despite the fact that this game is unapologetically gory and it's got this real creepy atmosphere, these things are adorable and I love them. The skulls they drop are massive pains in the ass though. And I'm about to fall down there. Is that death or do I, do I just go to the bottom path? Yep, okay, here's the bottom. Bottom path? Or is this like a middle path? I'm not sure. I don't remember this. Okay, no, it's this short area, but then you have no choice but to go down. And it's not like you go partially through the down area. No, you start at the beginning. And here's why the bottom area is a pain in the ass. These zombies. 
They take several hits to kill. They stay on the screen. And if this pumpkin guy uh, gets a chance to stand at the top of the screen and say, I'm grooving, which is absolutely what it sounds like he's saying, they all come back to life. And because of the zombies, you don't really have a time to always get over there to hit them. You kind of just have to take that they're going to get back up sometimes. Oh, God, and your range gets really annoying. And that's not the end of it either. If I went up, I actually might have gotten somewhere. I didn't see the up ladder. See, I actually don't think I know this room. I usually die at the Necromancer. Oh, and there's... Uh, Joker's up here, too. My point is, the Jokers are adorable. Absolutely annoying, but I kind of love them all the same. Oh. Probably by the end of this game, I'm going to have gotten enough game overs, game overs that I'll have just filled up this, this uh, high score list. Thankfully, if you start when you start at the beginning of the stage again, you have another chance to uh, get it right. Of course, as soon as I immediately get hit by the chairs way too many times, that's a really bad start to the stage. We can only hope that I'm getting my bad luck out of the way early. Ugh, man. Why do they have to move so much? I don't have time to wait for them to stand still because I'm on a timer. That damn wall of flame... And with only one hit, I'm probably going to slip up somewhere in here. Now, we haven't seen it yet, but these guys have a... Okay, uh, the head's just left, I guess. I don't think I've ever seen that before. The heads have, like, a jab attack where they're, uh... They, you know, they punch you, but they have a really long hand. I don't know why I didn't immediately go after him again. Oh, man. Oh, come on. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now my timing's completely off. The timing here is incredibly strict. And because the floor is slippery, I can't, like, take the time to readjust myself and take out the guy there. Oh god, I let go for just a second, and now I am completely screwed. Okay, I managed to make it through. But I have no lives, so even if I get to the next area, I've got like one shot to get it right. I don't know if it's just because I'm out of practice with this stage, but man. Like, stage 5 is when this game starts getting hard. Like, really hard. This is basically how I was expecting this would go. Okay, select just actually pauses the game. Okay, I was just curious for a second, because, like, the different difficulties that are in the, uh, in the iOS version... There's a part of me that wonders whether or not those were dip switch settings on the original arcade board. In which case, I'd like to know whether uh, I could. I wanted to know whether I could turn those settings on or off for this game. Because it'd be nice to just have one extra hit point. That would really make a lot of difference. It would make me feel safer, at least. Oh, come on. Okay, I somehow managed to hit that guy, like, from underneath me. Alright, yeah. All right, well, I at least have lives now, so that helps. Okay, good. Make sure you jump there and take the top path. I promise it is easier. See, I've actually... I feel like I've only ever gotten through the bottom path one. It's mostly because I don't really try.
Yeah, either way, with those, with the Jokers, be sure you jump twice. You hit twice while you're in the air. Because you need to both destroy them and the skull they drop. I love that little laugh they do when they hit you, though. It's so cute. Ugh, even if that's a huge pain. And be sure you go through the door instead of the ladder, or else you're going to be doing a bunch of stuff, all, a bunch of needless stuff all over again. I think it's just there to be a trap. I have to be cautious here. Oh, God. Oh, come on. That should have missed me. Uh, now there's two of them. That's not good. I right, please just ease up on how many there are. Okay, now we're going to be taking the whole bottom route. And I mean that because uh, now that we've gone into a new room, the checkpoint's going to load us back here when we uh, when we die again. And there it is. I wonder if since I didn't technically make it down there, it'll respawn me upstairs. Nope. What a surprise. And honestly, I'm really worried, even if I can beat this stage, because I remember stage 6 being a huge pain in the ass. Like, it's the hardest stage in the game, even after this. But again, if I'm remembering correctly, stage 7 is incredibly easy. So if I can just get past stage 6, I'll be fine. Ah, spawned from right underneath me. And I can't get over there to get them. God, and the fact, the fact that the zombies take two hits to put down is so annoying. They're one of the few... I mean, there are several enemies that take two hits to put down, but... When coupled with the fact that they respawn... Taking it kind of slow is really the best advice I can give for this. Some of them are surprisingly fast, too. There we are. Okay, I killed him. Now this time I'm going to wait, because I think there's a door. Okay, well now there's a ladder up. I'll take that. Oh yeah, this room. Off of me. Oh, God. I don't really know what to do here. It, this sort of room is kind of a pain in a auto-scroller stage. All right, I got one more chance. Never mind. I thought I had an extra life. I legit just looked at the clock like, oh, man, I wonder how much time I have left. We've been playing for half an hour. I got another two and a half hours left of this. I've just thrown my head against the wall and hoping something works. But that's exactly why I chose this to be a live stream. Because I want to beat this damn game. And I want to figure out how the hell I used to be so good at it. Because, like, I've played this stage plenty of times now. How, have I, how am I still garbage? Oh, God, how do I keep... Oh, God. I... Oh, God. Like, I, if I'm just running through, I am barely squeaking past that hand. So messing up even the tiniest bit is really screwing up my mojo. Oh, and trying to attack isn't a good idea because you cut your momentum doing that. So you're basically guaranteeing you're going to land in the pit afterwards. There you go. I think it's because I don't want to let go on the platform before it. Like, you really do just want to run it. Okay. 
So in non-Splatterhouse related news, I hope you guys picked up No More Heroes on the Wii. That was a really surprise announcement. I mean, there were rumors come around like, hey, it's going to, they're going to port No More Heroes 1 and 2. Although the rumors I'd heard suggested they were going to remaster it, which would have been way better. I mean, I guess they did remaster it, but... Oh, God. Oh, damn, I forgot about that, too. All right, well, I got through here. I still have one extra heart. Yeah, I think I may have to deal with some Rick clones again. Yep. Oh, yep, see, that slide. You don't get that. That is 100% a uh, clone move. See, in that room with the Jokers wasn't long. It's just a pain in the ass to actually do. And I somehow managed to have the exact same thing happen to me again. There we go. That one came out okay. Jump kicking is generally good for the clones. And you can look at yourself in the mirror if you so desire. Now this guy, actually, you don't need to fight. Just get close enough to the side of the screen and you'll automatically go into the next room and become invincible. Oh, but then I have to go through the boar room, the boar worm room anyway. Okay, nope, can't, can't take my time. Oh, okay, I was expecting that one to go real bad. That one did, though. Do I have another life? I maybe? No, I don't. God. See, I'm, I'm running out of lives before I even get back to that room. I just kind of have to, I have to really take the knowledge I've accumulated so far. So I'm just trying to remember what the strat for the boar room worm is. Boar worm room is. Oh, come on. Oh yeah, and by the way, these hands flip you off while they're on the ground. Or I think they might just be beckoning, like, hey, come. Come get me. I actually managed to recover that time. Yeah, no, I think they are just be- Yeah, they are. Darn it. I was hoping they were flipping you off. It'd be a lot funnier. Just have to get the positioning in this room. Get my groove back on that. We are sticking at a generally consistent 4.4 frames per second drop. Uh, frames dropped. Percent of frames. Oh, dang it. Ugh. Okay, if I can avoid getting hit one more time. I think here... Good, now just run. Yeah, all right. I always have two lives to start dealing with this room. No, nope, not again. There we go. Hitboxes can be very weird. Oh, and see, in that time, I managed to hit him twice in one kick. Sometimes they work in your favor like that. Now, this time we want to wait for the auto-scrolling to run as far as it can, just so we can skip this guy. See? hes I don't even have to worry about him. Okay, there we go. Now, maybe I want to hang out on the right side of the room for this. Maybe that's the safer option. Ugh, I mean, it didn't work with him. I'm still worried, because even if I can get through this room, I know what's coming. This ain't going to help me too much. I just kind of have to hope I can get through here with a life left, so that I can at least experiment a little bit. Well, that's not happening this time.
Oh, man. The fact that they come flying in is absolutely irritating. Oh, man, I couldn't even get a jump kick on it. See, most of the time, they honestly are content to ignore me. So that's, that's nice. Okay, there we go. We got through the room. Unfortunately, we only have two hearts left, so... I don't foresee this going well. Because we're at the boss of the stage. But first, that's our girlfriend Jennifer. We found her. We got her. Oh, my darling. I think that's what she's supposed to be saying. And in a shocking twist, something's happened to her. We're not sure what. But she's transformed into a monster. And it's a real annoying fight. And now we have to do the stage over again. The weird thing about the fight with Jennifer is that it's either really annoying or it's no trouble. Like, I've had both happen to me. Like, sometimes you just get lucky with the pattern of where she moves or there is a pattern that I'm, remem I'm just not remembering right now. So now that standards have increased for the quality of retro game emulation, there's a part of me that wants to see like a retrospective on how good is the emulation in this, because it, it's a bit soft, but it's not that bad. It could very well just be some improper scaling, because this is an arcade game which tended to have weird resolutions. Though at the very least, the aspect ratio seems correct. There we go. All right, fucking perfect run so far. This is exactly what happens. See, you can get good at this. Sometimes this ha this kind of thing happens. And then sometimes the AI just kind of acts out weird like that. Oh, God. So now I'm suddenly starting to struggle again. All right, let's just go. Okay. Not so bad. Just have to hope that the clones aren't too much of a trouble. Yeah, they're generally not too good at attacking in the air, so that's why jump kicks tend to be the better option. Oh, God. We are just inching each other on range there. All right, and we rush it. Yep. I think on, he probably, if you wait that long for the door to appear before you start going through, I think he really can't catch you unless he were to, like, come out sliding. Hmm, I wonder if, like, standing here is a good idea, like, around this area. It seems to be... If I remember to turn that... Okay, god damn it. We'll try it this time. Oh, come on. Oh, god. Oh, the, the speed at which you have to turn around, man. It can be really tight sometimes. Oh, that should not have hit, but okay. Okay, I think we're just about at the end of the room. There it is. Come back up, bit right. There it is. Oh, okay, that shouldn't have hit me. Oh, God, I keep falling for that one. And now I'm in another shitty position when I get to Jennifer. Uh, now I've only got one hit left. And there, okay, and I died again. 
See, this room, I legitimately don't remember the pattern you're supposed to take. Once upon a time, I definitely knew how the, the way you were supposed to handle it. And there's some part of me that wants to look it up. And then I immediately start failing ever, everything again. There's some part of me that wants to look it up and just see like how a speedrun handles it. So I can just be like, okay, that's what I'm supposed to do. But I have my pride. And sometimes my pride gets in the way. Like, I, at one point, could beat this game near flawlessly. I want to be able to do that again. Though, of course, I did have a bit of help back then. Because I'd seen Derek Alexander's videos just so many times. And I'd picked up a lot from his little gameplay clips. Though I'm not promising that I'm not going to do it at some point tonight. Honestly, some part of me is wondering if the lower path is actually easier so long as I'm patient in dealing with uh, the necromancer. Oh, come on. See, the problem is these damn heads. Okay, alright. We're through there. Oh, wow, he actually got me. See, that, that, like, slide jump kick. Like, that Crash Bandicoot shit. I can't do that. I most certainly cannot do that. Like, I can promise you, I'm hitting all the buttons. Can't, can't do it. That's just cheating. These guys are supposed to be, like, clones of me. We should have the exact same moveset. They would not be much weaker if they didn't have that slide. Like, have a little bit of a heart here, Namco. Okay. Oh, come on. They spawn, like, they can spawn, like, right on top of you, and you can't really see them, because they're behind your giant body. Oh, 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 okay, I was about to say I'm still alive, but I guess not. Oh, God, oh, come on. Man, there's just no good place in this room to stand. That's all I'm saying. I'm sure there's one spot that I just haven't found yet. Ugh. Honestly, every time I get through here, it's just luck. And by every time, I mean the one time I've done it tonight. Thing is, last time I remember just playing this game on my own time, I felt like I, like I was getting to Jennifer more frequently, that I was trying a bit more, so was it just that I was getting in there with, I mean, either way, I was getting through the boar worm room easier. Is that okay how he carries the plywood into the next room, and then he doesn't have it? Also, there's no door to get into this room. Man, the timing on that is actually meant to be just go as fast as possible. So it's like it's like a speed run game. In fact, it honestly is just the fact how well you can optimize this game. Like not to like Super Metroid levels, but 
the fact that to a casual player, it's very much like figuring out the exact way this game works and working around it. I do quite enjoy that about this game. The problem is just getting to that level. I know you're there up there, Joker. God damn it. I'm too I was too far to the edge of the screen to be able to properly react. Alright, let's roll it. Alright. That was see, that was a pretty good performance in that room. Aside from that one mess up, that's how you do it without taking damage. Oh, come on. Wow, that slide lasts a long time. Okay, wow, even if he slides right out of the gate, he can't catch you. Because you don't have... It's even before you touch the door that you get the invincibility frames. wonder. That didn't work so well. I only got one hit left. Yes, but I made it. Okay. So that was a pretty good performance in that room, and now I have two lives to fight Jennifer. Excellent. First one's going to be a bit of a bust, though, because I only have one hit. Jump kicking is generally a good idea with her, but... It's like she jumps and then stabs, I think is her pattern. So you generally want to hit her in midair, actually. That's, that's what you want to do. But actually doing so can be a real pain. Yeah, you hit her and then like as soon as she lands, jump to get over her claws. I at least have another chance. Or, you know, try and hit her to the side of the screen that you're not... Like, taking up all the space on. Oh, God, man. Ugh. Oh, man. Yeah, you're kind, you are kind of slow. And she has invincibility frames, so don't think you can just get her in the corner and completely take her out. There you go. This is a pretty good performance here. Oh. Uh. Alright. Okay, but once you hit her enough times, she'll briefly revert back to her human form. And she says something. I have no idea what the hell she says, because it's so garbled. But she says something. And just so you know, her pattern doesn't change. So... It's all about still being able to attack on that pattern. Although I think she is jumping a bit lower, which makes getting out of the way harder, and I think that's the game over again. Great, okay. In total, she has three phases. And in terms of her saying something in between them, a uh, point has to go to the inferior Turbo Graphics version, because I'm not sure how, but her speech is way clearer in that version. Like, despite all the visual downgrades they had to do to fit it on the hardware, her speech is just way better. So you can super clearly tell, like, every time she reverts back, she's going, Help me! And it's, again, it's kind of bone-chilling for a game of this era. Oh, God. I'm starting to get real tired of this room. So, you know, at least in something like uh, Metal Slug, that game is still a pain in the ass. And that you're just going to get hit a lot. But at least in that game, uh, whenever you continued, you respawned right on the spot. You didn't... Except for the Xbox version of Metal Slug 3, which was the worst shit. 
Because even if you continued, you had to start the stage over. In Metal Slug 3, the game with, like, the longest final level ever. Like, that, that's a final level that easily goes on for half an hour in, like, an hour-long game. Damn it. I, barely, I slid in there. Like, it wasn't like Castlevania knockback. I hit the ground and then continued sliding. Now we're just going to be fighting our way through the bottom route for the rest of this uh, quarter. And that one, I felt like I, I should have been able to hit him, but okay. God, man, they just have slightly longer range than me, you, and they are not afraid to use it to just edge you out. You gotta love how he jumps to go down the ladder. Like, I was standing right next to it, but now he has to jump. Now that zombie managed to hit me, and I have him on both sides, so now I'm, like, totally screwed. So we just now have a little more time to react to having him on both sides. So even being patient is not no guarantee that you're going to be able to handle this. And if you do, it still takes forever. Like, this is just the safest way of doing it. At the very least, the pattern's the same every time. You know, I'm curious, what's in this bottom path? Did I come down here before? Yes, I did. It leads to this room that I have no idea how to deal with. With jokers and another dog that immediately snuck up behind me and starts eating my corpse immediately. Or it might have been eating this guy's corpse that I happened to die just on top of. Okay, I thought he was going to stop and eat that. Okay, never mind. Maybe it's because I aggroed him. Uh, wow, man, okay, I'm hitting the button. It's not responding fast enough. The PS, my, at least my PS3 controller is a little bit sticky. Yeah, okay, this room is not easier. Well, we experimented a little bit. I've mostly got the first couple rooms figured out. Problem is just executing my strategy. Because it's got to be perfect. Oh god, okay. I managed to hit that. Okay. Back to the hand room of the hand witch. Oh, oh yep. So I was going to say, that jump was a bit too early. Why have these guys not done their punch attack yet? Like, I swear it's something they do. I wasn't making that up. They're just not doing it, which, you know, good for me. I don't like being outranged in this game, which isn't hard to do, because your punches are pretty short. Okay, and then it's like you go this way. Okay, hmm, a little bit off. Okay, I, I fell. And now we're going to be screwed for the rest of this, continue. Maybe, or maybe I can handle this. Got this top, and... Oh, okay, somehow I managed to avoid that. 
Okay, I'm just gonna be jump kicking these guys. It's it's safer. Who knows? Maybe taking this bottom path is safer at the end of the day. I'm curious what this guy actually says when he resurrects everybody. Because it legit does sound like I'm grooving. But you know, to be fair, it's a pretty funky song that's playing. Okay, I think we're safe again. We're back in our sort of safe pattern. Except now there's three of these guys. And another one over there. Great. There's a lot more zombies than there were last time. Might have safely been able to make that. Okay, yeah, but he, sometimes he goes off screen. Or I just killed him. All right. Okay, take the top path. Which leads us back to the boardroom room. Yes, okay, so we at least skip by that other room with the jokers. And uh, the clone Rex. Which, a part of me says aren't that hard, but yo, I seem to be having quite a bit of trouble with them. At one point when I first got this game, and I was trying to get good at it, I was convinced that my problem with the controls was the, uh, was just the gumminess of my D-pad. So I, I used my, uh, adapter that I have, the USB adapter that lets me use my Wii Classic controller on the PC. It works on the PS3 as well, because it's just USB. It uh, didn't help my performance too much. Oh, yep, saw that one coming. Should I really just hang out on the right side of the screen? Because I'm still getting torn to shreds here. Oh. Oh god, they land just so high. Okay, alright. Two hits is not going to be enough. Unless I get really lucky. See, I'm glad that we're at least having trouble here. This confirms that, at least the last time I had a bunch of trouble with this, it wasn't my fault. Or, it still is my fault, but this is normally how I am. Okay, I think actually you kind of want to inch in on her a little bit, but maybe not too much because she, uh, she'll just stab again if that's the case. And we're starting the stage over. This time I'm going to try taking the bottom. I think if I play it safe, it might be okay. And I just want to keep in mind that in the Turbo Graphics version of this game, you have like three continues. So we would be, uh, horribly screwed were that the case. And just in case you're wondering, no, this was also before the days when uh, console emulation of retro games, like officially parts of packages, this was before they were pretty commonly expected to have save states. Now granted, I probably wouldn't use them even if we had them. I just generally don't. The only time I ever use save states when I'm on an emulator is just to... If it's a game where that doesn't have a save feature, I'll just use it to replace it, basically. The only other time I can think of in recent memory where that wasn't the case was uh, when I was playing Mega Man Extreme 2 on the uh, 3DS Virtual Console. And even then, like... I didn't end up actually using it, but, like, I was having so much trouble with the true final boss of that game that, like, a eventually I was like, all right, I need to use a save state. And then I ended up beating it on that try, so I made it, but I didn't technically have to use it. 
So, you know, that was great and all. Okay, and that's the last time we're going to be able to stop him. See, it's either I'm grooving or I'm groovy. Like, those are the only two things I'm hearing, yo. Oh, just missed him. Oh, okay, he can hit me too. Okay, great. Every other time it seemed like I was passing through him pretty harmlessly. Like, the Jokers can't hurt you by contact damage. Okay, yeah, this bottom pass seems to take longer, but honestly, I'm not I'm pretty good at it now. I swear back in the day this was harder. Like that upper path was legitimately easier to me because I was better at it. Now I've lost all that skill. This is just way easier on me. There we go. Now let's not take the bottom path. What the, what was that? What was that thing? Like that little wisp pinwheel. Oh, come on. I thought I was actually going to be able to avoid that one for once. I wonder if maybe the halfway point's a little bit safer. Or at the very least moving around a bit. Oh, wow. So, somehow managed to get that one. Oh, almost avoided it. All right, just get me out of here. Okay, all right. We're not going to win on this round, but we got two lives to spare. Hmm, I didn't realize, I never, I don't think I ever realized the song that plays there. If we can beat this game, I'll go into more detail about it. All right, come on. Oh, yep. Great. You can't duck under it. You don't duck too low enough to avoid it. See, if you had that slide, it'd be a great place to use it. Shame I don't have that. Oh, come on. Oh, man. Jumping at all the wrong angles. Ugh. And of course, the attack range is a lot longer than yours. See, the important thing to remember is I just have to beat her once and then continues guarantee that I never have to fight her again. Oh, God, she keeps jumping right over me. Uh, and then I can't get out of the way fast enough. All right. Start the stage over. For like the tenth time now. Okay. Now I'm starting to go quiet because I'm really just... I'm getting annoyed, and that's very much the person I am. Like, just quiet annoyance. And honestly, I'm willing to bet that looking it up isn't going to help me out too much because I'm pretty sure my strategy is right on Jennifer. The problem is, again, just actually doing it. And the easiest path doesn't even let us see the Jokers. Yeah, and talking about Jokers is fitting, because I finally started playing my copy of Persona 5 this week. 
Like, I've literally owned it since the end of last year, and I only just started playing it. I'm like 10 hours in so far, and I just completed the first dungeon, which is, you know, that, that's, that's great pacing. I mean, I'm fine with Persona 5's, like, a lot of its gameplay so far. Its presentation, all that. My problem is just that the, it's so slow. Oh, oh, come on. So uh, fucked off that time. Alright. I can work with that. I only took one hit. Now, admittedly, looking up the strategy for this room probably wouldn't be so bad. Off of me, off of me. Oh, come on. Just barely scraped me. If I'd killed it, I probably would have gotten through. Oh. Okay. No, oh, okay, that somehow worked. I feel like my strategy here is working here, even though it really shouldn't. No, I think it's probably about to fail. Okay, I took a hit. Oh, come on. No, oh, damn it. Yeah, hanging back and trying to deal with them is not a good idea. They keep respawning. Okay. Oh, damn it. No. Come on. Yeah. See, the problem with the boar worms is that they latch onto your leg. So they hit you once, and then if you, uh, if you're not careful, they'll hit you again. And Jesus, they just latch. They just started coming out full force. Okay. I still don't know what the way to get through that room is. That's the one thing that would probably be worth looking up. Again, a part of me feels like it's memorizing just which one you're supposed to be, which ones you're supposed to be prioritizing to keep attacking without really stopping so that they don't have time to gang up. Ugh. Yeah, regardless of how much uh, cult classic status this game has, and even though I am still a huge fan of it, uh, this game isn't exactly uh, good. There's a reason why it's why it's just always gotten bad critical reception, like both in its sort of in its day and in like contemporary releases on the virtual console. Aside from its simple gameplay, like. This simple gameplay also does have its fair share of really annoying stuff. It just happens to be a good example of style over substance. Though admittedly, I wish that the good stuff was uh, a bit more able to make me forget about all this bad stuff. Because, God, this level's a pain in the ass, and if my memory serves me correctly, the next one's even worse. See, and I, I also want to kind of be quiet here to uh, make sure I can hear him when he's groovy. Keeps being groovy over on that side of the screen. Okay, but yeah, sometimes he just decides to fuck off for no real reason. Uh, 
And some part of me is honestly wondering whether it's worth just learning the lower room so I skip this entirely. Like, I feel like that would definitely uh, fix a couple of my problems. I think this is the one that really goes for it. Oh, oh come on. See, I wonder if the pros even go through this room, if this is even their strategy. Part of me really doesn't want to have to learn that lower room, though. That seemed like a lot of stuff coming at me. Okay, he spawned on top of me, and I still managed to make that work somehow. Oh, I was just a little slow on the uptake on some of these. Oh, come on. Like, look at how many of them spawn in right at the end. You have to memorize just how far along this room goes so that when you're at the end, you can just rush to the right and let the, uh, the cutscene take you. And figure out which one of these really aren't even problems. Okay, now I think we want to start rushing to the side. Okay, there we go. The Oh, I'm supposed to have invincibility frames there. I died. I think, like, the boy when latching onto your legs skips past it, but once you hit that, that ending point, uh, you lose control. Which is, you know, a uh, really bad, really bad design. I understand this sounds weird, like, how much I can just complain about how much of this level sucks. Like, oh man, that's, like, really annoying, that's bad. Oh, the controls are so bad here. And then at the end of the day, still say, like, yeah, but I love this game. Does it make sense? Not really, I know. But it's also not a guilty pleasure, because I really don't think this game is bad. It just happens to somehow do a lot of bad things. I don't know. And this would be a point where I say some things that are really salty just because that's sort of what I'm willing to do. Like I was going to say, like, you know, I, I mean, I don't think it's a bad game, but even though it does a million things wrong, I still love it. Like, you know, a lot of people love the original Legend of Zelda, even though that game sucks. <laughs> I'll fucking, I will. Okay, I didn't, I actually, that was instinct. I didn't mean to jump to the other ladder. All right, let's hope for the best. What the? F I swear a skull hit me there. Oh man, it's so hard to avoid those skulls, by the way. And I somehow managed to avoid that one, though. Now you just go for it. All right. Gets us through that room. See, see, I think the reason why I think that this game is not bad is just because of, like, what I said. Like, if you really know your stuff, you can learn this game. Like, everything has a specific pattern, everything behaves in a specific way. I messed that up and I still managed to get through okay. It's just a game you have to learn. It's just that some of these later sections are a lot harder to learn than others. Okay, there we go. That time managed to work out pretty all right. Two lives, two hit points. Let's see how, let's see if we can handle Jennifer this time. Come on. The next stage isn't even long. Like, I, I think I remember that. 
So it would just be surviving it, and if I could do that, then stage 7 really isn't a problem. It might take me a little bit of time to remember everything, but I seem to recall it's not hard. What the oh, come on, that should have hit. Now it's just doing this bullshit again. I think that's actually it. Like, you want to hit her, like, on the... When she's coming down. That might be it. And then knock her away from you just far enough that you can avoid her stab. That might be it. Because I remember there being a strategy that just, like, completely broke her. There we go. Alright, first phase. The jump kick's actually not a good idea because of the landing lag. I was doing this fight completely wrong. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like, the laggy controls sort of mess this fight up, but as soon as you remember how to actually do it, it's not so bad. Alright, we got through our second phase. She does that weird wine thing again. My heart's beating real fast, though. Oh, I've never seen her do that, like, short hop. And it's really messing me up now. God damn it. If she did, wasn't doing that, I probably would have been okay. All right, we got one more try. Come on, me. I can do this. I know how to do this now. I can do it. Okay, first phase. Come on. Alright. So you need to adapt to whether she's going to do the long hop or the short one. Oh, the, okay. That, some of these are, should be hitting, though. And now I'm completely messing it up again. I'm, I'm worried I'm going to be screwed this time. Okay, second phase. I still got one hit left. Now I'm starting to... I'm, I'm worrying a lot, though. Don't do those short hops. God damn it. Because I don't really... There's no real good way to counter those. Unless it's like running so far away that she feels like she's forced to jump higher. Alright, but we have a strategy for dealing with Jennifer now. We just have to make it back to her. And I mostly have a strategy for dealing with the stage, except for the damn boy worms. I think, I feel like I'm just getting lucky in that room whenever I do well. I'm getting really good at dealing with the chairs, though. They're no trouble. How the time flies. We've been in this stage for like an hour now. Keep in mind, the first four stages took like half an hour combined. Probably because I like never died. Like I died like once, I think. Oh, he actually managed to hit me. I'm sure a speed run of this game must be fun to watch. I might look it up after this. Again, I didn't mean to jump over that. But coming through here last time seemed to be good luck. So let's do it. Okay. You're holding off. No, stop it. Leave me alone. Cool. Oh, God. Bad... Bad placement of that. And I fell down there. Which means we're going to have to do the whole bottom section. Okay, no, we just skipped to the necromancer part. Alright. I might be able to work with that. Let him be grooving.
Oh, God damn it. I didn't want that guy to spawn. I ain't taking the risk again. Yeah, you ain't grooving here. Of course, one HP isn't a good way to try and deal with the boy worm room. But now that I at least have a better idea of how to deal with Jennifer, I can get there with less lives, hopefully. Nope. Oh, oh, come on. See, in my opinion, this guy shouldn't leave the screen. So you don't have to worry about him leaving your line of sight and getting somewhere where I can't see him coming. It's when he's flashing, he can't hit you. Which, you know, would be a really nice thing to do anytime he was sliding over to the other side of the screen. Sliding into your DMs. All right, yeah, just be groovy again. And I want to know how I managed to get those quick kills on him. You know, I ain't risking that shit, and he's hanging out on the left side of the screen where it's way less safe for me. Okay. I just realized he has a skull. I always thought that was like a jack-o'-lantern. We're doing this one the long way. I die already. It's a good thing this room doesn't have a timer. There's that thing, though. Which seems to be acting as a timer because it's homing in on me pretty damn good. Alright, so I guess I have that thing to worry about now, whatever the hell that is. God, so I guess I can't even really take my time in this room. And I really wish that you could just eventually put these things down. Okay, yeah, and that time he just decided to leave for some reason. Alright, boy worms, I got no lives left. Which means this one's probably screwed again. Especially if I'm fucking up that early. and they're like spawning in on top of me. Okay. If we can beat Jennifer without taking any damage, we're good. If I managed to pull that off, that would be amazing. Come on, intense gaming luck. Do me good this time. I don't have luck, so this is probably going to go just as poorly as you think it is. In fact, probably immediately. Oh, well, I was, I'm impressed that didn't hit me. There we go. Okay, let's do it again. Come on. 
And I just want to make a point that this is the only part of the game that has this like split path thing going on. Like I know like the outside area that we had that like you could fall into the docks, but once you finish that you would come back up. This is the only time where you actually have like a different path you can elect to take instead of just being a punishment for falling the wrong way. Even though it does serve that purpose too. Okay, this time we'll take the bottom. Purposefully. And just hope we can get the quick kill on the Necromancer. It's a good thing these muck men only take one hit to take out. Otherwise their slightly longer range would be a huge pain. You ain't grooving on my watch. Except when I have no choice because of my slow movement speed. Oh, come on. Uh, I should have been able to hit him somewhere in there. Oh, come on. Oh, wow, you really rushed me. Now there's like five guys over here. I can barely take out in time. Like, I gotta mash that square button. And even then, it doesn't really always work, and I somehow managed to get two of them on opposite sides of me. So that could really mess me up. Oh, come on. I should be hitting these. Why is it sometimes I can make it through this room with... Ab because this room, there's, like, mechanics in play that I don't quite understand. Like, how many zombies are spawning, where he's moving, whether he just dies immediately for some reason. And then that time he just, he's just guaranteed to get out of the way so that you can't hit him. I don't want to risk that. See, it feels like I should be able to get him in, like, a lock, but it's not really... Especially if he just decide. Okay, well, he, he decided to leave, at least, so that helps. All right, boy worms, I have enough health that I should hopefully be able to make it through. And then have hopefully have an extra life with Jennifer. Okay, now's where we want to start standing here. Okay, wow, that 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 run was amazing. Three hits that actually could be possible to beat Jennifer with that health. I just kind of have to get lucky. And hope she doesn't pull off that stupid short hopping. It's like wave dashing, actually. She's wave dashing. That's what's going on. Okay. Okay, first form. First phase, I should say. There's only one form. Although technically she's switching between two forms, I suppose. Alright. 
Careful. So this is the way this fight's supposed to look. Like, this is skill here. Oh god, nah, that wasn't, though. Okay. Second phase, one more. Should only have to hit her, like, four or five more times. Which, saying it out loud, sounds like a lot when I'm already sort of fucking up with her. With the damn short hops. Okay. No. Oh, but if I hit her with the... Sh if I uh, jump kick her with the short hops... Yes! All right. That was probably pretty loud, but there we go. We beat Jennifer. I cheered way too loud for beating up my girlfriend. She says, thank you, goodbye. Again, it's clearer in the Turbo Graphics version. And that hole is absolutely disgusting. Okay, stage six. The heart. This is the mo this is the most difficult level in the game just because of the number of enemies it throws at you. It's not a long stage if I remember correctly. I feel like it's only one area, but they just keep throwing these bubbles at you everywhere. And it's been like 10 years since I've played this stage at all, so maybe 9, so I am working on instinct here alone. And I couldn't get him off me. Is there a way to even do that? You really gotta take care of the bubbles first before they can spawn those enemies. But I don't want to go too far ahead because that's where stuff, the bubbles start spawning. Uh-oh. Okay, well I can at least still hit him even after he forms. Okay, I can shake him off, but man, is it a pain to do that. Because I have to deal with shaking him off amidst everything else that's going on in this room. I think I... Okay, I just got a one-up. That's helpful. Ugh. So yeah, this is just how it goes. You just gotta have to deal with this, and I think this stage is technically only one room, so every single time you die, even if you make it to the boss, you're gonna be dealing with this, and it seems like they're spawning in different places each time. I think if at least I keep moving forward, then they... the ones behind me... Never mind, I was gonna say they don't have time to catch up, but uh, that seems to not be the case. God, I wish I could punch in the air. God, and I wish my punch was just a tiny bit longer range. Okay. We're at least on a new level, so I can deal with a whole new kind of bullshit. And we finally get to see this again. Look at my score. I ain't beating that top spot where I didn't even beat the game. All right. Look at how unceremoniously he just flopped down there dead. Get off of me. Yeah, you just gotta like pop. I'm pretty sure these things are like fetuses. They also look like just something you'd see an alien. Oh god, and they're so small. Oh, and maybe jumping to attack him isn't really a great idea. Oop, the percentage of dropped frames has gone down a little bit. It's at 4.2% now. Oh god, and my the kick has even worse range. And I think if they latch onto you, you don't have time to shake them off before you take some damage. So it's not like having a super quick uh, wiggle is enough to save you at all. It's 
pretty damn annoying how many enemies latch onto you in this game. And by that I mean two. The boy worms in these things. Oh, come on. This is all it's going to be for the next hour, guys. It took me an hour to get through stage 5. It's probably going to take me an hour to get through this stage. A man can only hope that I instead get lucky somewhere along the way. Oh, come on. Why they got to keep landing in the most inconvenient places for me? Like right outside my hitboxes. Got all right, these like veins here seem to be getting a bit thicker. I can hope that means I'm close to the end. Also, the bubbles are getting more frequent, which is really bad. Okay, there's the boss of the stage, the heart. And I die as soon as I get to it. It still spawns bubbles, so I probably would have been screwed either way. Okay, but I can at least, I've at least gotten to the boss, so that's good. We just have to deal with these bubbles every single time. And hope I don't take too much damage in the middle of it all. What the? Oh god, a bubble spawned right on top of this guy. Like, as soon as I went to attack him, so... Like, the I popped that bubble instead of attacking the more imminent threat. Come on. And I'm already down to one heart... By the way, that's a fun... Oh, it happened again! By the way, that's a fun little sort of turning uh, games on their head. Like, yeah, of course, games traditionally give you hearts for your health. So this one just decides to give you real hearts. God, if they just didn't spawn on the ceiling, my life would be a lot easier. Because I can hit, like, every single other one on the ground before it has a chance to even do anything. God, and they just keep... Coming at the most awkward angles. Oh. And there's so many of them. Again, like I said before, remember that the Turbo Graphics version of this game only had a couple continues. So imagine every single time I've continued like three times that I just would have to restart everything in this game. Jump kicking is actually not a horrible idea because it at least allows me to keep moving. And I can hit some higher enemies. I just need to time it really well. Come on. All right. Oh, dang it. Okay, see, if you're on your toes, you can get through this stage without the most trouble in the world. But I'm still having quite a lot of trouble, though, because, man, am I just having to stay on the ball every single second here. I'm almost at the heart, right? Oh, God, I was a little too slow on that. No, oh, come on, don't land on top of me. Oh, and again, I make it to the heart and immediately die then. Game over. Yep. I promise you guys, if I can just beat this one stage, get that one good run, then the rest of it, then the final stage is pretty darn easy. It might take me, again, like I said before, it might take me a quick second to relearn the final stage, but I really don't expect it to be a problem. <sighs> okay, I'm getting surrounded here. Uh. Uh. 
and now I'm sure I'm screwed with only one heart left at this point. Though it's not like I can really tell how far along in the stage I am. But I'm dead and the heart isn't in sight, so I, it's worse than I've done before. Oh, got just a little bit too close to that one and I somehow managed to miss that one entirely. Starting to lag behind here. Okay. All right. Catching up. Good. And of course, it's going to land immediately on top of me. Which, where I really cannot do a damn thing about it. God, how, it, how, how can I get so close to the damn hitboxes and it's not enough? Oh, this is the sort of game you can have a heated gamer moment in. Let me tell you. And I can just watch my YouTube channel plummet in like five seconds flat, except actually it'd probably be okay because no one's here. To, no one would be here to see. I'd say PewDiePie could only wish for that sort of thing to happen, but uh, I think that's... Dude, imagine if PewDiePie streamed and just no one showed up. How crazy would that be? God, you are surprisingly large on the screen. That's all I'm saying. And again, with all of these threats running around, it's really hard to prioritize a target. And say like, yes, this is the thing I need to be focusing on right this second. Right now, I'm somehow doing it. Never mind. Oh. This is going to be what I see when I dream tonight. I guarantee it. I'm just going to be dreaming about this. This usually isn't the sort of person I am where I'm just like sitting here for hours at a time, slaving away at just finishing this one thing. But every once in a while it happens. And honestly, that's kind of a sign of a good game that I even feel like playing it just that much. Because it also happened again pretty recently. Uh, when I was playing the story mode for Dragon Ball Z Budokai 1, I was here for like an hour just trying to beat the final battle with Cell. Oh boy, the D-pad on this controller has seen better days. But I'm afraid to use the analog stick because I'm worried that'd be even worse. It's a 2D game, analog sticks are just weird. I'm just going to keep focusing on what's ahead of me. Okay. So far, so good. I know something happened behind me. Okay. All right. See, it's all just about distancing yourself from these things so that you can hit them when they jump at you. Oh god, that's a lot of them. And I'm done for again, damn it. See, I, I hope you can all appreciate how just how quickly this stage can overwhelm you. And need I remind you that while yes, even in my best days, this was not a stage I could beat without taking damage, that's only because I could, I would take one heart of damage on this stage. Like, all of this shit is happening around me, and I would get hit once throughout the entire stage. And even that was annoying to me, because I was like, damn it, if I could just beat this stage without getting hit, that would be a perfect run. Like, a literal, complete, perfect run of the game. Once upon a time, I could do that. And that's why my performance now frustrates me so much. Like, how? Muscle memory is a thing. How did I fall so far? 
Like, this is, aside from the fact that I so lightly remember just what this game is, this is, like, complete newbie level. So my man's mate take two hits there from a simple quick mistake. Uh, I'm just getting real tired of being annoyed, honestly. This is just sad all around, really. Much like all of these zombie creatures in this game, I am just slowly dying inside. The zombies in the game died a little faster, but we're all dead. It's fine. Oh, man. Oh, damn it. I almost slipped right through there. They're the only enemy in this stage, but they're just so annoying. People like when live streamers do this right, when they are just plugging away really long on just something super hard. Like some call me Johnny could do well with his Kingdom Hearts level 1 live streams. Ah, oh, they're surrounding me. See, it'd be great if this game, like in uh, the like the PS3 port of Wonder Boy and Monster Land, and I guess the 360 one too, it has a button dedicated specifically for wiggle really fast. And that's because that is a central mechanic in that game. You wiggle super fast in certain spots, and uh, you can cause more money to spawn. Or you can just cause money to spawn in general. But man, would that sort of thing be handy now. Oh, man. Okay, so I only... Okay, never mind. I was going to say I somehow only took one hit in there. But then now I'm just... Oh, okay. Still alive. Barely. See, no matter whether the bubbles are weird things, they're only one hit. But good God. See, the game Ninja Warriors on the Super Nintendo, which was also an arcade game, but the Super Nintendo version's way better. Uh, and they actually got a uh, sort of a remake recently with Ninja Warriors Strike Back, Strike Again, something like that. Yet another game that Derek Alexander talked about and introduced me to. It's just not one I've played anywhere near as much as Splatterhouse. In fact, I've barely sampled it on emulators. Same with Wild Guns, actually. But either way, all of that. Uh, that game was also a 2D beat-em-up like this. It was much deeper. Hmm, I wonder if hanging out on the right side of the screen is a smart idea for this stage. Because it seems to at least get most of them off of you, and so you can't get sneak attacked. And just because of the distance they spawn at. Oh, man. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. And there's the heart again. Well, I'm decently sure that even if I were to technically make it to the heart and start engaging it, that still doesn't count as a checkpoint. Okay, well this time I'm just gonna hang, try hugging the right. See how that works out for me. Oh, oh, come on. That one I feel like should have missed me. Oh, and sometimes they just still make a beeline for you. Like, there's no safe zone. Which, again, there probably shouldn't be. Like, I'm sort of just cheesing this, but I feel like it should still work. Oh. See, somehow, despite all of the chaos that's going on here, this still feels safer. 
despite the fact that I'm letting like every single one of these things pop and come after me. Oh. Okay, keep going. We got one hour left. I'm not going later. Unless I can actually make it to stage seven, in which case we ain't giving up until I do it, because it really won't take me long, I promise. It's just going to be, I have to beat this one stage. Oh, got on top of me. Don't let go. God, and then they just, uh, everything just goes downhill real fast because you only have four hits. And keep in mind, the difficulty levels in this game are just the number of hits you have. So, like, if you play Splatterhouse 2 on the Genesis on, like, super hard difficulty, you get two hits for the entire game. Plus, limited continues because it was originally a console game. All right, I feel like hanging out on the right side of the screen really isn't working. Oh man, why are you so big? Why are you so beefy, Rick? Okay, things are, yep, about to go really south really fast. Somehow still alive. There we go. God, I've been playing this stage for so long. I saw that item thing on the bottom bar, and I was like, wait, items? Like, are they like health potions or something like that? Completely forgetting, like, oh no, that's just where, like, if you have a weapon picked up, that's where it goes. You can see that. Oh man, I'd be nice to have a weapon in this stage, because it would at least give me longer attack range. Though at the same time, it would also limit my speed. I wouldn't get the uh, the same. I saw that one coming for a brief second before it actually happened. That one too. See, some of these attacks aren't blindsiding me. It's just I see only see them coming like one second before they hit me. And since the bubbles keep spawning even while I'm fighting the boss, getting there does not mean anything. Like, I'm still going to be completely screwed. Honestly, I look at this and I really do have to wonder, like, I'm sure that the, the iOS version of this game wasn't just emulation. Like, I feel like it was actually ported. And there's some part of me that has to wonder, like, was there some other change made to this game? Like, how... How did I used to be so good at this? And then just completely fail. And the worst part is it doesn't have... This game doesn't have a save feature of any sort. No save states in this emulation. So, if we get to the end of three hours and I still haven't beaten this stage and I give up and quit, if I decide to try again another time, uh, I'm going to be back at level one. Though at the very least, with the, all the knowledge I've accumulated up to this point intact, unless I, like, I get amnesia or something... Nothing's impossible, man. It could happen. It would be very sad, but it could happen. Okay, I somehow made it through all of that without taking damage. What the hell is going on here? Holy shit, I made it to the heart without taking damage, yo. Damn it. I should have paid a little more attention to those guys. If I could pull that off again, I might be able to do it. That was just like a moment of pure zen. Like I was just paying attention to the game and absolutely everything was going right for me. Okay, and the controls were working every time. That one I'm more willing to blame on this controller rather than being like a fault of the game. Though I still wish you were smaller. Because I'm definitely going to be screwed like this. I really do need all four of those hearts. In order to actually beat this heart. Oh, come on. Still have an hour. 
Let's see, I feel like when one of them starts spawning on the top, that's a bad sign. Okay, that wasn't a good idea. Which I understand sounds like a weird thing to say in hindsight. Like, wow, yeah, it didn't work, obviously. It wasn't a good idea. Like, I, I just saw, kind of saw it immediately. Just a little too late to do anything about it. Uh, there's too much of this. There's, there's really a big part of me that just wants to give up. Yo, I can't do it, man. I can't. I gotta see this shit through. Oh, come on. That was like the one time I managed to get the quick duck working properly. And it messed me up inside. Oh, now there's just a bunch of things everywhere. Everything gets out of hand in this stage, like in an instant. Because if one of these guys comes behind you, you have to turn your focus to them because they're the more immediate threat. But then more of the bubbles pop, so more of them spawn, and they always seem to be out of range. God, I wish your kick was longer. I wish you were smaller in general, but I also wish your kick was longer. Like a more lanky guy. Like, I mean, Rick is a pretty lanky guy in general. It's the terror mask that makes him super buff and beefy. And to be fair, the difficulty of these games never really diminished with, like, the reboot. Like, the reboot is still a pretty damn hard game. Thankfully, the reboot at least has difficulty options. So, like, I played that game on easy mode, and I don't regret it in the slightest because the final boss was still a pain in the ass. Because it's not actually a boss, it's just an enemy rush. But it's a really tough one because you got to protect Jennifer. Yep. Oh, man. At the very least, the part doesn't have invincibility frames. So I can basically damage it as fast as I can tap the square button. But I can't put all my focus on that like uh, the torture scene in Metal Gear Solid. Because I have to focus on everything else that's happening. But that's why I can't really give up now. Because I feel like, man, I, I can do it if I can just get there. I just need a good run, and I can do it. Alright. God, it would be nice if this stage I could ease up a little bit, though. Listen, regardless of how much fun you can have with this game, never forget that it is an arcade game. It was meant 100% to steal your quarters away, even if it unfairly. And I will say that about, like, any arcade game. They are, they're, they're like this, man. They're just like this. Like, you know, people love their Metal Slug, and that's fine. I, I love Metal Slug, too. But that is not a fair game. Yep. Oh, God. See, I wish I had a slide, because if I'm ducking down and attacking an enemy, and I see something coming at me from above, there's no chance that I'm going to be able to stand up, move, slowly move out of the way in time, and then be able to turn around to do anything about it. Oh. See, at, the, at the very least, you're allowed to pop the bubbles that are forming on the ground before they're actually fully formed. So, like, if I see it coming, I can just pop it and take care of it before it's actually a threat. Before it has a hitbox. Oh, I, I see that one I feel like I should have hit. Oh, God. Yep. Uh, at that time, I was still attacking, though, so I don't know what happened. And that really just goes to show the chaos of the stage. Like, as soon as you die and the game takes a couple seconds to play your death animation, everything goes to shit before the game can even fade out and say, like, oh, well, time to start over. Like, in that brief time, everything is done for and, you're com and everything is completely screwed. 
like I was saying, like that one run where I was doing really well. Like you have to be on the ball every single second. Like I'm starting to lose right now. Okay, all right. And I feel like these things don't always jump at the same intervals. Like, sometimes they'll jump sooner or later. Oh, God. Several things. Can't get out of the way of that one. Yep, okay. I, I might have been able to get out of the way of that if I was moving a bit faster. I don't think this is going to be a good run. There's the heart, but I'm not going to be able to deal with everything around here. Come on. Damn it. It was probably close to dying. If I could have made it there with one more heart, I probably could have just done it. All right, we just need that really good run, man. As I just keep saying, we just need that one thing. All right, okay. I was having initial doubts about whether this would be the one because things were getting a little crazy there for a second. But we seem to be back in control now. Hanging out towards the rights generally seems to be a pretty good idea. Oh, get off of me. That's definitely bad. I can usually make it a bit further than this before I take damage. Got to stop it. Oh, okay. Real bad, real bad. All right, done for. Pretty good score, though. That might be enough to get me on the high score list again. Yeah, right at the bottom. All right. We're definitely not going to be filling this up, because I'm probably never going to be able to make the score list again. God, why do they give you so many symbols to put in your damn name? I can see it. The end is in sight. The problem is there's a wall in the way, and the only reason I can see that the end is there because there's a window. But I still have to get through the damn wall. The end's in sight, but it's not a it's in sight, but it's not actually close, I should say. Or maybe it is close. The problem is just that it's maybe I was right the first time. There's a window on a wall. But I can see through that wall and I know that my goal is right beyond it. It's just gonna take some expert play. At the very least, these sorts of runs are at least starting to reveal to me how I was able to get so good at this stage back in the day. Because, like, it's possible. You just have to have that right strategy. And maybe I'm rediscovering it. Maybe this was a strategy long since forgotten that I am picking back up once again. Oh, God, no. Let go of me. Let go of me. Oh, damn it. I feel like I was punching some of those bubbles, but it uh, they weren't popping until they were actually coming out. That one was great, though. That was close. Maybe if I had just been a little more careful. But this doesn't feel like the kind of stage where being careful is actually the right answer. Oh god, yep. Uh. Look at me mixing up my high and low punches. It's like I'm good at a fighting game. Which I can 100% guarantee you is never the case. Not great. Only two hearts left already is pretty bad. Unless we can get that real good run against the heart. Where it's generally kind about how many bubbles it's spawning. And where they're spawning from. Yeah. Oh, man. 
got to keep popping my, my knuckles. And hope that all of this will be behind me one day. God, yeah, I'm going to be real with you. If I can beat this stage tonight, I have no idea when the hell I'm going to play this game again. It's like, yo, I don't want to get go through all this again. But once I do it, I feel like, hey, I could do this really easily now. So I'd be more inclined to come back to it. Or maybe I'll just take the opportunity to say, hey, I finally beat Splatterhouse 1 again. I can move on to learning Splatterhouse 2. Uh, not a great run. You gotta pay attention to the bubbles right below your feet, man. You gotta do it. And sometimes they just take so long to jump and you're... Uh, you're standing there punching them because you don't want to be off guard when they actually do come at you. I saw my man starting a one-up, man. It's good. Damn it. That was good. But I think a score like that's enough to get me on the scoreboard again. Getting slightly closer to filling up that, uh... Actually, no closer because we're going to push my other score off the list. With that one. God, the, why can't this stage just have a checkpoint? If I could have another crack just at the heart with full health, I'd be able to do it. I can guarantee it. Like, that's that's the sort of thing I want to avoid. Because I'm definitely not going to be able to recover from that. Not that I'm not trying, though. So who knows? Okay, I was going to say maybe I can get extremely lucky and then a bubble fell on my head. So that's clearly not how that's going. Wow, that was somehow enough to get me third place. I'm really worried that I'm going to accidentally hit no, and if I do that, I'm going to scream and end the stream immediately and never play this game again. That I can tell you for a fact, if that's what happens. Uh, oh, come on. I, I know I was sort of right on top of it, but I still should have been able to hit that one. Oh god. Okay, so I managed to get out of that one. I was pretty pretty sure that one was going to be my death. This one is, though. Somehow still alive, but uh, one hit, that's not going to do me any good. Yep. One right below my feet, just between my hit boxes. Or my hurt boxes, I should say. That's more accurate. Regardless of how much anguish I'm going through, there's an, I'm still going to be a semantics guy. Oh, come on. I think maybe I should have been a little more off to the left to sort of bait where it dropped. Okay. See, and I don't want to try and approach these things because... I'm so heavy, I'd be it'd be hard for me to get back to a good spot. It's better for me to just stand my ground. Okay, I don't know how I managed to hit that one. All right, come on, Locke, carry me through this time. Not looking good. Yep. So that's the thing. I barely feel like I'm getting better at this stage. Only just barely enough that I'm willing to keep going, but not good enough that I actually feel like it. But I am starting to recognize the patterns of the bubbles that are dropping. Okay, somehow I managed to miss that one. 
Okay. See, there's some part of me that wonders, like, whether it'd be a good thing if the bubbles made more of a beeline towards me when they were floating through the air. Like, on the one hand, it would give me a chance to pop them before they have the chance to spawn enemies instead of just starting on the left and landing on the left where I'm not seeing them. But at the same time, I don't want to get swarmed by bubbles. Which is not a sentence you hear someone say all that often. That shouldn't have reached me. Oh man, it's going to be a day for celebration just as soon as I can beat the stage. Because again, that basically means the game's won if I can just do that. Okay, there's the heart again. But I'm in a really bad spot. Yep. I feel like when the heart shows up, you want to be more on the left. Just so you have a chance to deal with things. You know, when I started this session, I understand. I, I understood that I was having trouble with this game, but I was like, hey, you know what, maybe I'll pick up, if I'm playing it constantly, maybe I'll pick it up real quick, and I'll be able to handle it. And this is going to be kind of a short stream. Uh, I didn't quite expect that this was still going to be a full three hours on this game that I could beat in like half an hour back in the day. Which, is yes, is a weird thing to say when I'm only 24. Like, yeah, ba back in the good old day... When I had this game on my phone and I could just destroy it, yo. There's my hits. God, if you attacked slower in this game, it would be fucking impossible somehow he managed to get it on back of me. Yes, I understand on back of me was a weird thing to say, and I managed to accidentally pause it the same way both times. Okay. Oh, how did I manage to get turned around? I think I, my finger, like, accidentally brushed against the analog stick, and I got turned around there right when I didn't want to. Man, the fact that you can pop the bubbles on the ground is definitely really nice. And it's things like that that make me realize, like, hey, you know, yes, this game does have its parts of good design, even if it's shared with parts of really annoying stuff. Oh, man, okay. Fucking expert movement there. Hitbox dissonance in a lot of weird places here, though. Oh, come on. Oh, that's really bad. Oh, man. If I could have just hit it before it had a chance to get anywhere, it might have been enough. It's just the number of times I'm getting so close. Okay, that was really dumb of me. Managing to get hit that quickly. Oh, God. Oh, man, you jumped way too fast. Man, two hits, one hit. Already is a rough place to be in, and I'm dead. Huh. 45 minutes. We are getting very close to, again, this being another hour-long stage. Oh, I was hitting down. I was hitting d attack. Oh, early on, I already lost a hit. Okay. 
we're still sort of in control here. All right, okay, going all right. That shouldn't have worked, but it did, okay. Oh, okay, that's fine. Now that I'm super close to the heart, I should be popping most bubbles as they come out. Damn it, come on, how many hits does this thing take? Let's do it again. God, see that way that one just flew away? See, it'd be nice if since it flew so far off screen that it would just despawn, but uh, I don't get that sort of luxury in this sort of game. Oh, God, everything just... Ganging up on me real quick and just staying right outside my hitbox. I feel like that's actually just a problem I have in general, just like barely overestimating my uh, hurtboxes. I'm trying to use proper fighting game terminology. Like, there's so many times where I'm attacking things and I'm like, yep, just right outside where I need to be. So I always find myself cursing, like, uh, why isn't this just a little bit bigger? See, and that's why I like Mega Man, because uh, you shoot in that game. You don't have to worry about distance. There we go. Which only makes my appreciation of Mega Man Zero a little more confusing. I don't know, maybe it's just because I've played that game so much that I innately know the hitbox. I don't know. All right. Oh, damn it. Because you move, you, you move like a truck in this game. It's so hard to immediately react to something and be like, oh, damn, that's I need to move out of this spot right now very quickly it's not really something you can do uh and your invincibility time isn't that long so if something does go wrong in a stage like this it's very likely that something's gonna go wrong very quickly afterwards Why they're too spawny in there. Oh, man. Oh, okay. Okay. I think it's looking someone all right here. Here it comes. God. Ah. Uh. What does it take to get you off me? Okay, now we're in a bad spot again. And I basically, when I'm just hitting everything around me, I'm just kind of going mad with the controls and just being like, all right, frenzy. Something's got to work. There's things everywhere around me. I got to hit something. And somehow it ends up working out for me pretty well. Oh, come on. I was trying to move that time. Yep. There's very little I can do there. I just have to make it to the heart with more hearts. Be sort of patient. And just hope my positioning is good so that I can pop most of the bubbles on their way. Oh, come on. See, I feel like three hits is like the minimum that I would need, which means that I have to get through this hell of a stage only taking one hit. Which I mean, sometimes I'm getting better at. 
You know, sometimes. Things going real bad everywhere, yep. Okay, I'm still alive, but not for long like this. Also, every time I'm attacking, like, while I'm kneeling on the ground, I'm basically attacking twice. Oh, God. If I just hit him, instead of just barely missing him, letting him latch on me, and therefore ensuring my death. Oh. See, the rounds where they start on the top, I feel like I it's easier for me to go out of control real quick. And then some, a lot of the time, there's like two things happening at once, and I can't possibly hit them both. I am just getting tired, man. Oh, darn it. I wasn't expecting to make it onto there. Uh, the AFU. One more reasonable run, and I'll kick that one off the high scoreboard anyway. Once again, I'm trying in vain to push other buttons on the controller in the hopes that, hey, maybe one of them will open up like a secret menu or something. It lets me adjust some settings and make my life less of a living hell. But doing it in-game so that it's still technically legal. I don't know, speed run legal or something. We go in some way, who cares? Oh, dang, I didn't see that one until it was too late. See, they do kind of blend, all blend in together. Oh, and that time I just jumped into it because I was like, yeah, I can probably hit it in the air. Okay, I'm at the heart, but there's a million things coming at me. And there we go. I just realized I never finished my thought like 20 minutes ago what I was saying about Ninja Warriors on the Super Nintendo. That was a 2D side scrolling beat them up like this. More complicated, yes. But it had an ability where like you could build up a blaster meter or something. And uh, if you built it up, then you could just hit the button to expend it and it would knock everything to the ground. It wouldn't really damage them. This is a terrible run. But it would just knock everything to the ground and give you a second to think. Like, yo, how useful would that be here? Like, if it just got everything off me for one brief second so that I could deal with the problem a, a little bit on my own time. I'm actually performing pretty well right now. Too bad it's uh kind of too late for that. Yep, oh, man. It's amazing how many of them can how many of these little things can slip through my defenses. Like they're not at a height where I can't hit them. It's just that they're barely managing to escape my timing. Again, if my hitbox, if my hurt box, I, I'm always going to say that wrong. Or maybe actually I am no. Actually, in this case, I do mean hitbox, like the range at which I'm attacking things. If that was just a little bit bigger. Uh, it would either make this game easier, or then I'd just be missing things a little bit further away. 
Who knows, again, with my style, probably. Come on. Oh, oh, man, that was close. A maniac fighting style. Oh, come on. It was, like, again, right under my feet, and there's a bubble on top. I couldn't get out of the way in time again. It's amazing how many times the exact same thing can happen. It's like, oh, yeah, there we go, and I immediately just pushed a few right off. All right, I'm officially uh, more than half of this chart now. Oh, man. Listen, this is the monkeys are the typewriter problem. You put infinite monkeys in a room infinite time and give them infinite monkeys in a room with infinite typewriters infinite time one of them will eventually write the works of william shakespeare it's a law of averages you just keep doing something long enough and eventually something's gonna happen that's how it is i keep playing this for long enough eventually i'm just gonna get that run Barely avoided taking damage there. Oh, come on. That definitely should have missed me. And there we go. Yet again, I managed to die right as the heart is scrolling on screen. Like, just someone keep a count of all of this. And I have no viewers right now. Literally everyone has given up on me. Like, yeah, he's been here for like an hour now. He still hasn't beaten this stage. You're all missing that I spent an hour on the last stage and I managed to beat it. It's law of averages. You just got to give me enough time and I can do it. Like, whether intentionally or not, I keep doing this. I'm eventually going to completely memorize this stage, know where every single bubble is coming from, and be able to avoid every single thing. But I feel like you have to put a little bit of effort into it to memorize it that caliber. And I'm I'm way too stressed out for that sort of thing. Oh. God. Uh. Oh, come on. I was hitting attack. I'm definitely screwed this time. Okay, well, there's the heart. Oh, I was doing amazing that time. But there was just a little too much against me. I just put in that picture from The Simpsons. I guess fate was against us this time. By the way, did any of you guys watch my newest video? I spent like a month working on that, and I just uploaded it yesterday. It's my longest review to date, and uh, like two days later, I still haven't gotten any uh, a content notification on it, so that's good. Oh, again, that one should have missed me. I'm done for it. You know, I understand I censored it, so I would be 100% planning to fight if they told me it was restricted to viewers 18 and over. And some of that censoring took a while to get right. Mostly in the strip fighter. In fact, completely in the strip fighter footage. Everything else was very much static images. But you know, after I have a after I had a video uh, mar uh, marked as being for 18 over just because I used a swear word in the title, I figured using pornographic in the title would 100%. 
get me. But I guess pornographic is like just enough of a technical scientific term that it doesn't immediately flag YouTube system. See, if I just said porn or naughty or inappropriate, then that could have gotten me. Sexual, definitely, but I was just being clinical enough. And that was the intention. Because I don't think any of those games were good enough to be titillating. Okay. All right, this is good. Oh, damn it. Oh, God, and it just, again, missed my hitbox. If I'd been able to knock it out of the way, I might have had some time to work. The Turbo Graphics version of this stage has a distinct advantage in that it's on the Turbo Graphics, so you literally have Turbo buttons built into the controller. So like, you can punch that hard as fast as the game will let you. And that does help. Oh. I feel like maybe I'm just starting to get a little bit of a feel for the length of this stage. Oh, come on. But not for the enemies, apparently. These guys can somehow still manage to completely wreck me, even on my 20th time through this level. When I've had at least 10 attempts make it to the boss, these guys are still just as much of a pain as they were when I first started. Nope, I couldn't get out of the way of that. Maybe the reason that people like streamers playing hard games like this is because they get angry, but uh, I don't do that. I just get increasingly done with life. Oh, come on. This is bad. Okay, recovered somehow. But it would be nice if I didn't take damage. And if I didn't take damage again, this is not going to be a good run. And I managed to miss that. Yep. Uh. God, if only the boss did spawn bubbles. If it had some other attack that it was well telegraphed and I could tell where the hell it was. And I could prepare for it that way. This would just be over by now. Uh I feel like it's been a long time since I've gotten legitimately angry at playing a game just because of the difficulty. More, nowadays, I'm much more likely to just put it down and be like, nah, man, I, I'm not doing this. I can't. Or I stubbornly insist that I can and I just waste hours of my life doing it like this Budokai Klonoa. Though at least in Budokai and Klonoa's case, I was eventually proven right. I have beaten all the... Except for Klonoa Beach Volleyball. That hard difficulty is still beyond my talent. Oh. There's the hard again. We got 25 minutes left. There's a very good chance I can't do this now. We have less than half an hour left and I still am no farther than I was an hour ago. It's wholly possible that when 10 o'clock runs around, I'm still going to be here. And I promise you, if I'm still on this stage at 10 o'clock, then I'm just going to shut it down after the next game over. Like, I'm not going to keep going at this all night in the hopes that, hey, maybe eventually I'll beat stage 6.
get off of me. But if I can make it to stage seven, then we are going. No, oh, come on. He just slipped past me again. I don't have time to hit confirm. There's bubbles everywhere. I have to immediately move on to the next target with my best judgment. Again, I should have hit that one. I should look and see what sort of hacks are available for the Splatterhouse games. Because it'd be great if this, like, arcade game just had, like, a, a slight balancing hack. Like, we reduced the number of enemies on this stage. We gave you... We put it on the easier difficulty to make it a little more fair. We increased your hitbox a little bit. Lowered your hurtbox just slightly. Maybe add a checkpoint somewhere in here. Just balance this game a little bit. It could really use it. But there's just not enough people that care about Splatterhouse to do something like that. Uh, oh god. Uh, okay, so I managed to get out of that. I have to come so far close to me. So far close to me, I know. Like, I promise you guys, I realize the stupid things I say before anyone else has a chance to be like, well, wow. Like, what did you say in the heat of the moment? Like, I don't fucking know. How did I not attack him? And why is my kick so damn stubby? Hmm. Oh, that's a high score, at least. Hey, all right. Number four again. Look at that gap between one and two. I just keep coming back in for more. There's nothing else I can do. I promised I'd be here for the three hours. Or until I beat this game. I was really hoping it'd be the latter. Because again, like I said, I once was so good. I once was an expert at this game. I figured three hours of continuous practice would be enough time to get me back in my groove. Never could I have predicted just how wrong I would be. Oh, they just couldn't turn around fast enough on that one. Oh, come on. Oh, I almost slid under there. Oh, God. A lot of things. A lot of things. Come at me. Okay. Oh, that's bad. But I really don't have the time to continuously abandon ship. Yep. You just have to hope you get over there with a good run. And not really anything on your ass so that you can focus for a bit on the heart. How many times can I say it? I should have been able to hit that one. Listen, yet your hitbox in this game is really wonky. It just seems like a lot of the time you can't get it to work for you. Oh, 
and the only times you ever can, it's purely accidental, I promise you. So I can promise you, if I just had a little, if, I, if this game had a save feature or a password so that I could at least keep practicing this one stage, I would eventually be able to get good at it. I can promise you that much. Okay. This is good. Uh-oh. Bad positioning. Oh, come on. Yes, all right, I beat it. Now get out of the way, because the heart explodes. And that ooze is toxic. If I was standing there, that would have killed me. Okay, we did it. We finally did it, guys. We beat the heart. Final stage. Stage seven. Give me a little time and I'll be able to get this. Because it's really not that many foes. Like, we got these things, the logs, you just jump over them. Just let the fire, you can't kill the fire, guys. So just let them jump over you. See, it's either you jump over them or you let them jump over you. That's all this stage is. That was close. Oh god, there's a lot of them. God, there's a lot more enemies in this stage than I remember. Also, they're using the same... Oh, that was a log. I thought that one was a person. All right, they're using a lot of the same graphics as stage 3. It's just now it's on fire. Yeah, but this is the entire stage. Like, it's just dealing with all of this until the boss. Who really isn't hard. Oh god, okay, I thought that one was a log. I understand they look different, but man, in the heat of the moment, it's really hard to tell. Okay, there we go. That's the stage. That's literally the stage. And now it's just the boss. There's a grave here. The mask summons the spirit from the grave for some weird-ass reason. And it's this thing. I don't know what the hell this thing is. Now that it starts summoning hands, just get out of the way of those. Oh god. And then you just go back over and keep punching it. It'll take a couple runs. Oh, okay, uh, don't jump. Just, just run. All right then, is there a checkpoint? There's not, okay. So they just give up on checkpoints after stage five, but at least this stage is so short and I'll be, I'll learn it soon, I promise. Before long, I should be able to get through it without taking damage. You don't want to pull your punches with jumping over the logs. The hitboxes are a bit wide, or a bit tall, I should say. And you gotta really remember which ones of these are logs and which ones are people. Okay, there we go. So I feel like I read at one point that this is supposed to be Dr. West. This weird head thing here. I really don't know. What the? Was I just a little too close? Oh, okay. Does that. All right, so I'll, I'll watch out for that next time. All right. And that might be, that's basically everything he does. Except I don't know why those things that are dropping from the sky are hurting me. I feel like they shouldn't be doing that. Except now I have to worry about the hands doing it too. Man, this thing is really gross. I think I just noticed that mouth on the side of its face for the first time. That's probably another spot on the high score. Yep. Because I actually managed to make it to another stage. All right. We got this one, guys. We got 14 minutes left. I'm confident I can do it in that time. I'm 100% confident in this time I can beat this stage.
or at the very least without going over like way too long because again what you saw was basically the entire fight I just have to remember that eventually he starts using his hands while his face is out there you go see I can get through the stage without taking damage already we've been here for five minutes and I can already do it so once you get to like that the fourth cycle I guess I have to start being uh more cautious about the uh the hands like wait a second oh god that one was way too fast I couldn't have dodged that come on oh god I, I swear I don't remember those things hurting so again, it's been so long, I really can't trust my own memory anywhere. There we go, that's how you dodge that. And then that's basically never going to hit you, so whatever. Just got to watch out for the weird potatoes falling from the sky. I don't know, whatever the hell they are. Okay, let that out of the way. Oh, come on. With those little things falling from the sky that I don't really have much of a way to dodge, I, I actually am kind of surprised I beat this without taking damage. I want to know who these guys that are on fire are. Is it like the oven guy in Resident Evil 4? He's just like, yeah, he was in an oven for some weird reason. Like, man, you talk about the weird things that happen in Resident Evil 4. Most people bring up the giant robot, and that is certainly a prime example. But I just like to bring up the fact that there's one guy that's just in an oven... And then he ambushes you, and he, like, immediately dies. And if you examine the oven afterwards, even Leon is like, what the hell was he doing in there? Okay, that hand's gonna attack again. All right. Oh, God. Okay, come on. I got hit twice there. Oh, man. It's being a bit more unpredictable than I remember. I either have to actually start paying attention to the things that are falling, not that I have much speed to dodge them. Yep, that's just what I was expecting there. Or I just have to get lucky with the patterns at which they fall. And also I need to stand closer to the head so that, you know, uh, I actually hit it. See, like, my sprite is definitely connecting with his head a little bit, but it's just a little too far away. Okay, I'm paying attention to the sky. All right. There we go. Good. Uh, maybe a little closer. See, this time I'm getting really lucky with the pattern at which the f those things are falling. Oh, that, yep. Oh, God, a little too close to him. Okay, this probably isn't going to turn out too well then. Yep, and there it goes. Like, what even are the things that are falling? Are those just, like, chunks of earth that are being sprayed from the ground when he rises? And we're definitely never going to hit the high score point again because there's nothing in the stage that's giving me points. Yeah, when the two logs are next to each other, you got to jump really late in order to properly avoid them both. Oh, oh God. They're getting real close together. All right, it's fine. Uh, uh, all right, good. This at least gives me the best chance I can have against whatever this thing is. And why the mask summons it for reasons I can't understand. I'm not even sure if there actually is an explanation out there. Okay, don't jump for these things. Okay, except for when that happens, but I, ha I was a little too far away to the side there. Oh, man. Oh, come on. Go away. Oh, oh, enough time for that man to take two hits there. OK, 
Okay, hope for the best here. Of course, one falls right on top of me. All right, this could take me a little bit more time than I was expecting. I think it's just all about having a good run with the stage, a lucky run with the hands, a lucky run with the debris falling. The stage, I'm not too worried about. Like, at most, I'm taking one hit, which, you know, it'd be nicer if I wasn't taking one hit. But something that proper uh, work in the fight should be able to mitigate. All right, good. Okay, good. Flying out over here. Uh, yep, wasn't going to avoid that one. Oh, come on. Okay. Just need one good run here, and I think that'll be enough. Oh, and of course it just immediately conspires against me. And the fourth time he pops up, he's going to immediately use the hands, so watch out for that. But I don't want to wait too long, because I think he starts using the hands if you wait too long, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do there. Once again, the problem is not the exact strategy, though I could still use a little bit of work as to what his moves are and when he's going to use them. But it's just executing what I need to do. I promise, this stage really isn't as hard as the last two. We are not going to spend another hour here. Oh. Okay, I thought I was going to get hit a second time there. Oh, come on. Man, the timing on some of this is really precise. To avoid taking some hits from those hands. You know, I'm just going to hide over here for a second. That might have been a poor idea. Okay, it somehow managed to work out, okay? Oh, man, I probably could have gotten out of the way of that. All right, I wonder if that's actually a smarter option for dealing with them. Oh god, that- oh, come on. That almost worked okay. I wonder if the debris is programmed to come down closer and more annoying on that final one. Because I feel like that fourth one is just the final one. I hit him enough times there and it's all over. See, the problem is I have a meme that I want to put up on screen when I do this, but I just thought of it now. And I kind of don't want to just pause the game to download the picture to have it ready. So I'll just have to quote it once I do this. I really hope the bitrate hasn't gone to shit since then. Okay, we're looking okay. In fact, the total number of dropped frames is steadily decreasing. I think it's becoming more stable. Right as we're about done with this. Okay, good first run there. Ooh, okay. Dodge that, good. That should avoid, that should miss me, good. Ooh, all right, managed to avoid all that debris. Okay, good. Oh, oh just hit me, okay. But I still have three hits, so that's good. Might just be able to tank this. Nope, okay. I thought he would die sooner. So I'm not entirely sure. I think maybe I just jump over those. Like if I can time it just right. I can keep the attack up, which would be a lot easier if there weren't the kind of random debris falling. 
The debris does not need to be there. This fight is enough without that. Yet another thing that should be fixed with a balance patch. Like, yeah, the core gameplay of this game is fine. So I think like criticisms based on that are weak. But there's definitely things about this game that should be fixed. And, you know, I don't really know that much about ROM hacking, but I feel like they're minor enough that a fan could do it. A dedicated one, for sure. Oh, come on, stop landing so close to me. All right. See, I'm starting to think now, is there like a pattern to them that I'm not seeing? I'm really not sure. Okay, barely managed to dodge that one, good. Now let's just try and jump over the hands this time. Okay, or the, you know, the buttons could work. Okay, he went down again, that's a good sign. But I still kind of have to actually perform here, damn it. I was getting too antsy about jumping. Three minutes left, but we're doing this. We're definitely, I'll go over a little bit. At most a half hour. If I'm still here in a half an hour, then that's really sad. And I'll give up. Okay, that was, that was bad. That could screw me entirely. Oh, God. Two hits. Uh, clearly, it's taking a toll on me. Wow, that was that was absolutely pathetic. I was going to joke, like, man, if this somehow manages to be the one, no, I can guarantee you this will not be the one. Oh, wow, that meant missed me somehow. Uh, okay, good. That one will miss me. And then those come down immediately. Yeah, now there's definitely no pattern to this debris. It's really just I have to get lucky. Which is not at all cool. Alright, so there we go. I think that's going to be my complete list of balance patches for this game. Uh, add a checkpoint to the heart. Reduce the number of enemies that appear in the heart. Reduce the amount of hit points on the heart. Like, basically just starting there. And then uh, get rid of the debris in this stage. Give yourself one extra hit point. And that's basically it. Oh, and uh, reduce your hurt box and increase your hit box. Or is it the other way around? Nope, that's it. Make yourself a smaller target that can hit a little farther. Oh, God, even when I try to dodge it, there just happens to be another one right in my way. And as soon as he starts going down, his hitbox disappears. I can't get in extra hits by trying to, like, hit him. Well, by trying to, like, duck attack. Oh. Oh, God. You, there's so long, like, when you're attacking before you're allowed to jump again. So I, like, have to time my attacks specifically to always happen while I'm jumping. It's worth noting that the iOS version of this game did add a couple extra features. Nothing that really changed the game, but I remember there being DLC that would uh, take the mask off Rick and just let you play as normal Rick Taylor. It was cosmetic, so 
It could have very well could have just been a simple. I'm mean, sure it was just a simple sprite edit. But I never bought that DLC, so I'm curious what it looked like. I'm sure there's like a screenshot of it online somewhere. Oh, come on. Why is it so hard to avoid that? Sometimes a little bit of movement helps. Oh, come on. It's just a little too late. How close do I have to be? Okay, now he's just suddenly pulling out the hands. Oh, 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 man. I almost completely avoided that. Ooh, man. That one was close. Oh, okay, that one almost worked. I almost had it there. There's a bunch of messages going through on Discord. Thankfully, it's in a server, so it's not like I'm being inundated with, like, well, you have 113 new messages. But, like, I just caught a glimpse of someone typing because I can barely see my Discord window in between everything else. Alright. Come on, give me that good run. Alright. Good. See, I don't know why I'm so averse to standing so close to him, but man, it, like, I really want, I really, I want to try and keep my distance, but it doesn't really help me. I need to be close enough that I can hit him. All right, excellent so far. This is great. Oh, wow. Man, to dodge all of those. All right, this is good. Uh, sure, we're close now. There we go. That was it. A couple minutes over, but we beat Splatterhouse. Time. And I got a full 100,000 points for doing it, so that's shooting me. Despite the fact that I did nothing but beat the final boss, that is enough to get me to the top of the high score list. I have no idea what that face is. Oh, boy. I feel kind of lightheaded. Might have helped if I had actually remembered to bring a drink in here. All right. I'm still worthy. I may be beaten and battered, but I can still beat Splatterhouse. You run away, you walk away from the burning mansion, the mask shatters off your face, and the credits begin playing. It's an empty victory, because even if the evil of Dr. West has been stopped, Rick has still lost Jennifer. And I specifically waited to bring this up. The song that plays during the credits, it's called This Story is Happy End, with a question mark at the end amazing song. It's be haunting and beautiful. I adore it. And this is what I was talking about with Jennifer. Like, when you reach Jennifer, there's a small snippet of this song playing. I'd say this is easily the most famous song in the Splatterhouse series because of how good it is. And we know how good it is because the, uh, the team that made the remake, whether it was still Bottle Rocket or Namco Internal that did it, uh, the, like, whenever you boot up the reboot, uh, it plays a small snippet of this before, like, the title screen shows up. And, like, just starting the game up and hearing that little bit, I'm like, yes, this is Splatterhouse. Both the arcade version and the Turbo Graphics version of this song are fantastic. There's a couple of remixes on YouTube that are fantastic. Just in any form, this song's amazing. So regardless of what I suffered through, that was Splatterhouse 1. 
it needs a little bit of work. It is a flawed game, but regardless, it's a game I still very much enjoy. Honestly, partially because of its faults. It's the little game that could, and it honestly kind of couldn't, because it still has a very small fan base. But there's some of us out here that are dedicated, and there's always a chance this series will return, uh, like a year ago now. It's been a while. Uh, Namco filed a trademark application for a bunch of uh, Encore games, like how Katamari Damashi Riro was known as Damashi Encore in Japan. They filed a bunch of them more, like whether they were actually planning to do something with them. Sequel hook there, by the way. Whether they were actually planning to do something with them or they were just filing them to have them, who knows. But two of the ones that they filed that were specifically of interest to me were Klonoa Encore and Splatterhouse Encore. So there is a very strong chance that the reboot could very well be remastered at some point. I can hope that if they do so, they will also port this game. Because it's still fun, and it's... Actually, I was going to say it's been a while since we've had a remix of it, a, a release of it. But nah, it's on the Switch. It's not hard to get. And I recommend it. Get good at it. Get really good at it, like I once could. And you'll see a, a tightly designed game just only once you can get good at it. Until then, it is a cool game with neat ideas that is just hampered a little bit by gameplay, style over substance. But at the very least, still an interesting time. It's a perfect game to spend Halloween with. I'm glad I managed to do it with less than 10,000 dropped frames, 2.7%. That's still really bad, so I'm going to stick to... I'll stick in the office for as long as I can. But I'm glad I at least managed to do this. This is at least one chapter in my life I get to reclose. See you guys next week when we return to the last... Uh, the last I was going to say The Last of Us. The 